Welcome back to another episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. What do you do when you got a vintage Rivera era Champ 2 with the old juicy AA764 circuit on the bench and it doesn't work? What do you do when it arrives with no fuse, dead on arrival, owner hasn't even heard it before, doesn't even know what it sounds like, I bet. That, that may not be true. But here it is. It's not working. We're going to get down and dirty into this old girl right here. All right, Eric. The rest of you goons and mutants out there. If you haven't seen this before, then you're in for a treat. This is one of my favorite form factors for Fender combo amps. Um, it, it's sort of based upon the old Music Master amps. If you guys know what those are, then you kind of get the idea. But, pardon the chair noise. Um, you're looking at a Champ 2. This is a what, what, what they call a Rivera era amp. And if, if you recall, the original ones, uh, the, the original Champs, the, the line of them, started around 1948, 49. Uh, single ended amp. Um, obviously one uh, output tube. Uh, this kind of takes that thing and just pushes it over the edge, as you can see. Um, without turning it around, uh, you can obviously see that there's a master volume, there's a mid boost, there's a um, probably more lossy tone stack than, than they had in either the Music Master or the original Champs, but that doesn't really matter here. Um, there's a lot of flexibility with this amp. They originally came with a 10, uh, but Eric here put in a 12 inch greenback, which is just perfect for this. Just really suits the form factor in the circuit. This thing, instead of being around five watts, is uh, pushing around 18 because it's got a push pull pair of six V6s in there. It's got two 12 AX7s running in there, solid state uh, rectifier. Just a really cool amp. So, uh, architecture wise, uh, what is it? Well, Wow, you, you might say that this is, uh, for me, an idolized deluxe. Obviously non-reverb. Um, Circuit-wise, uh, if memory serves me correctly, I, I believe it was designated the AA764, um, which falls right smack in a Rivera era of the, of the tube amps that um, Fender was putting out there. And, and that guy had a lot of influence on design. And then if you look at some of his own uh, amps that he was putting out under his own name, you, you can obviously see the, the heritage there going back to the old Fender amps. Just adding his own seasoning, obviously. But uh, this one came in dead on arrival. Uh, I checked the back briefly. There's no fuse there. I mean, and then it has a lot of uh, upgrades that I would personally add to a lot of the Music Master and Old Champs for guys that were just gonna keep them forever. There's a, a legit output jack. Um, this one, if I recall, might have a line out. Um, so it does have a little bit of uh, excessive fluff, but at least they kept it tasteful and on the, on the rear of the amp. So still a very streamlined amp, uh, if you're looking at it in any case. Um, I did add a fuse in and I turned her on under a current limited supply. I'm not getting any sort of conduction whatsoever. I don't even know if the, the heaters are firing off. So this is just a cold case from the get-go. So let me turn this thing around and then we'll just kind of go through it briefly. This is a reasonable angle. Um, there's that line out. Um, they added a hum balance, which is kind of cool. Um, we have an unlabeled jack here. Let's just, well, let's not assume anything, but probably uh, for an extension cab, if anything. Um, we, we, here's your pair of 6v6s. These look like some old RCAs. There's an old 70s Fender label 12AX7 and uh, unlabeled or previously labeled. 12AX7. Uh, the, the schematic calls for 7025s, which are just 12AX7s that have been hand selected for low noise. Um, and there is a giant cap can here. Now, uh, Eric was kind enough to include his own. He went through uh, Hayseed Hamfest, who custom 
spun up this little guy here. Um, but we will not be using all the sections. Now I did briefly glance at the schematic, which is how I was able to give you that little bit of an overview. Um, so let's just power her on and see if we're going to get anything in the way of heater voltage. So here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, and I'm getting a slight dip in the voltage output from the supply along with a slight rebound. And then you can physically see here that the heaters are working. There's a small amount of hum that might be transformer related. But it actually seems to be coming through the speaker. But in any case, I don't see any of that uh, blue glow from the uh, electrons there bouncing around in the glass here. So am I gonna say they're dead? Am I gonna say there's no screen voltage? Um, let's pop this chassis out and just get to the bottom of it. I do like the, the black control panel on, on the front and back. It's very classy. Though it would be kind of cool to see what it would look like in that metal turned silver face finish. But this was beyond the era, so let's see what's going on. You can take a look at the cabinet here and just sort of eyeball the proportions. It's just perfect. Perfect height. Just everything's perfect. Except it doesn't have a reverb tank. And then you can see like the ladder 70s style construction. Um, there's no cleats um, holding on the speaker baffle. And I think on some of the earlier Music Master amps, you do get that. You'll, you'll get the older Blackface or early Silverface style construction. Um, but still, this thing has held up over time and it's, it's looking great. We're going to do a nice deep clean on this guy. And I cannot wait for that part. All right. So here's the basic uh, top-down shot on it. This is not my forte. I'll leave it to the other techs out there that have better gear. Um, I'm more of a three-quarter shot guy. Um, but you could see clearly that someone's been in here and they were just on a mission of J-hook stuff. Um, I, I don't know if these sockets were original. I don't know if Fender was using ceramic back then. Um, I see some one ohm uh, current sensing. Wow, just sloppy. Sloppy work. This is not Rivera's work or the fact the guys at the factory or the girls. These are current sensing resistors here. Uh, we're going to take that out. We don't need that. Um, and it's just something that I don't want in there flopping around. Um, they took the, it looks like almost like solder wick, that braided wire, that mesh. Um, and, and they, uh, they removed it from, looks like the, oh God, I just saw something else that's hysterical. I just figured out what this guy did, uh, and I, and I'll zoom in on it. Uh, but they took that, uh, the ground, uh, the ground connection to the chassis away from the cathode of these six V6s. And what did he do with it? Um, he, he just, uh, in a very sloppy and hasty manner, just, um, tack soldered those, one uh, one ohm current sensing resistors there, um, and wow, it's just it's just touching the tip of the the main speaker jack. And again, yeah, that is an extension jack. And then right in the middle of it, you have that line out. Uh, and, and then way over here on this side of the chassis, you do have that uh, bias balance. Uh, this is the quote unquote death cap. It's not in this case. That's that's a misnomer because this is the appropriate type of cap that you want in this particular position. So as, as far as I'm concerned, that can stay there. Maybe I'll um, put a fresher one in there, but it's just fine. These are typically overrated. And when these fail, they don't fail as a short to the chassis, which is gonna energize the chassis. Uh, they're gonna fail as an open. So they're gonna, they're gonna break apart like that as a disconnect. And you, you're not even gonna notice it. You may notice um, a slight increase in uh, background noise, depending on where you are and what's coming out of your outlet. That's something you might notice. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, not so much. But I like to put them there um, because uh, for me, I'm a couple miles away from the most powerful uh, AM antenna on, on this half of the country. And when I don't use these, uh, there's a, an appreciable and obvious difference in what I'm getting through the amp at idle just with the thing sitting there warmed up. Um, let me, uh, I might reposition this camera and zoom in so I could show you something that I found kind of comical. So uh, stand by. Now I'm, I'm not judging, I'm, I'm judging. Because I've done this before, but I've done it using using uh, tape, using, you know, like low tech 3M, the painter's tape or some frog tape. Um, I don't ever mark up the, the chassis in any way that can't be um, removed without any sort of evidence that I was there. So if you take a look, if you take a look, you'll notice these little hash marks here and, and they're uh, a different quantity of them on each wire. Well, as it turns out, let's look at this one. One, two, three, four, five, right? So that's, <laughs> let's look at where that is. Now um, we're gonna go clockwise, uh, pin one, two, three, four, five. So these sockets were replaced and each one of these hash marks corresponds to a particular pin number on these sockets. So yeah, they were replaced. Guy didn't do a terrible job, um, but there's there's a need for some cleanup, and it, it's going to be a little more extensive of a service than I was anticipating, um, especially with, with the cap can. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to remove some things just to get adequate clearance because we don't want to burn stuff up. So this looks like uh, this particular cap can is uh, mounted to the chassis using a clamp type mount, and then it looks like they uh, brought over a uh, chassis solder connection uh, at the three o'clock position and then again at the 12 o'clock here. And there was a broken one here at the six o'clock position and I, I'm not even showing you guys that, do I? Just kind of tough to get down there and look at. Um, here's, uh, those are just, look at that dude, just come on. We're gonna, clean up all these, um, they're gonna get some new caps. These caps, these are old Zycons, and it's not necessarily a bad brand, but there's certainly uh, there's certainly a reason for me to replace these. These look like they're like late 80s, uh, maybe uh, early 90s, just going by the, uh, by the style of construction and, and the way the labels look. And then there's another one here um, that's going right to the plates and then over to uh, the tone stack over here. This little guy is getting replaced too. I, I, I don't like, J-hooking is it's totally fine to do that, but why would you even do that if you have an eyelet board? It just, it's more work. And then it's more work for me to undo it. There's no reason for anybody to do this. So if you're, if you're gonna do a J-hook, at least do it on a complex PCB. Uh, this is Fender's, one of their last iterations of the old fish paper eyelid board style um, of circuit board. Uh, and, and just like that, um, this one feels, uh, actually, I'm sorry. There I go judging. This feels quite dry compared to the, the wax dipped ones that you were getting in the mid to late 70s. So that's a great thing. Um, what else? Uh, the resistors... Uh, they're all original. Um, it, it looks like the guy just went in here and, and did a basic recapping of all the electrolytics. Um, even using a better quality, these look like old Atom uh, bypass caps here. And they're probably still good. I'll take a peek at that. Um, what else? That's it. Um, these these are stout rectifier diodes over here on this end. You can't really see because I'm still zoomed in, so I'm I'm not. I'll test them, but I, I should not have to rebuild this bias board. And and if I do, uh, those little noise suppression caps are going to go away because I, I find that by this point in the life of this amp, uh, they can actually add noise. Though they're in a kilovolt range, so they're probably fine. So all that to say is it's best to leave things alone if you can, because you just create more problems, don't you? 
And there's that mid boost. All right. And what is the mid boost actually doing? Is it, it doesn't look like it's switching a cap in. What it's actually doing is it's, uh, looks like it's bypassing the tone stack. So I bet there's a big uh, decibel increase in output as well. Um, I did not study the phase inverter arrangement, so I can't quite tell you what it is. And it doesn't have the familiar layout that you would see on the uh, older black or silver face amps. So I can't just by sight tell you what's going on, but I see some 220K bias feeds there. Um, all the, the, these caps, these older uh, orange drop type caps are high quality. And I got a batch of those from an old electronics professor from uh, what might be the now defunct uh, Orange Coast College. The guy was a, uh, was teaching electronics theory and actually doing a lot of practical things in the lab. And his son, um, I think he's still around, but his son did pass on all of his dad's old gear that he grabbed from the lab as he was on his way out. And I hand tested them, sorted them out, labeled them. Um, those are great caps. I only came across a couple that had um, moderate leakage and it was really not something due to age it's just something that was due to the conditions at the factory at the time so these are solid caps so at any rate um, all the tubes are pulled we're going to get through some voltage checks on the circuit um, but i'm actually out of time i gotta switch gears for my day here so i'll probably just post this up and give you guys a part two